<laughs> I've started a terrible thing. And with all this double posting, spamming emotes <laughs> makes it worse than ever. <laughs> spamming Kappa, spamming base trades. This looks amazing. This looks like we've got the most rowdy, ridiculous chat of all time. <laughs> but alright, ladies and gentlemen, Twitch small bugs aside with this double chat. Twitch small bugs aside with this double chat. We are going to get into game number one of a best of three. You like what I did there? Uh, game, number one. Deja vu. <laughs> game number one of this best of three. Spawning in the bottom right, it is going to be the yellow Terran player, My Insanity's Botfinic. In the top right, as the Teal Protoss, it is MVP's Billowy. And uh, have you ever watched the Spice Girls movie, Spice World? No, but I can spice up my life. Oh, well, it's an amazing movie, first of all, so okay. you're really missing out. But second of all, it's where I really learned what deja vu was. This is the joke where, like, uh, someone was like, does anyone really care if they find the cure for deja vu? And the guy goes, Psh, not me. And then they say it the exact same way again. That movie came out when I was, like, eight. So, taught me a lot of really valuable things. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I think Spice Girls in general taught us a lot of valuable things, man. It did. Taught us like, about girl power. <laughs> like, tell me what you want. What you really, what you really, really want. Really want. <laughs> Alright, so we've got a couple of subs and resets while this goes on, so we got to get some shoutouts caught up as we get this series kicked off. Uh, big love goes out to H-N-K-O-L-O-V, so Hank <laughs> Thank you for subscribing. Brand new. Camodaz reset for two months. And then Wonder Pika also reset, or brand new sub, excuse me, to the channel. Which is nice because, again, our sub count fell a bit. And it's nice to see some people helping us band aid that. But thank you guys all for subscribing to Base Trade TV. Woo! But, anyways, Botfinic, we've been following a lot recently, not just today, but in recent casts. And every time we have his TVP, as we've said. Ooh. Ah! I guess because he's got the Nexus on his opponent's side, question mark. Um, anyways, point of this being, Bofanix looked really good in everything we've seen him in. These tank pushes, these marine pushes, cool beans. But Billowy is not just any Protoss. He is a Korean Protoss. He's pretty darn good at that. And uh, is he actually on MVP? I thought he was a B-teamer for someone else. Billowy? Yeah. I mean, I just default MVP, so I would believe his clan. Let's look here. He's actually on the Africa Freaks. Yeah, that's what so, I was thinking. So Very old account, actually. He was on MVP uh, in 2014. This is latest. And then Prime, SKT, Spenu, and then Africa Freaks. So he's, he's been the wow. B He's been like a B team or slut. Oh my god. He's just yeah, like this, all over the place. This is actually, I think, the long, like the most teams I've seen on someone's Wikipedia. MVP first, very first, question marks everywhere to 2011. Checks, check six, that's an old name. Rising Star, who the hell is that? OGS, rip OGS. MVP again, and then Prime, SKT, Spenu, and Africa Freaks. Like, that is a long history. Holy shit. He's only 21, too. So he's been around the block a couple of times. Hey, yeah, a little bit. He's been the dishwasher for a lot of teams. Because <laughs> that's uh, what, like, the B-teamers do. Well, a cool announcement outside of the tournament for a moment while this goes on. Apparently, uh, I guess somebody saved or solved the next step of the Radio Liberty puzzles that's been going on for the Nova Mission marketing stuff. And uh, the responses are being posted in chat and on Reddit, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. I, I, I love that I love that it's not just like here's an announcement today and it's like boring and lame. It's like a little bit of interactiveness. It's a puzzle that people have to solve. It's kinda cool. So I'm about I, to spoil uh... it, so if anyone does want to hear the answers for this, please cover your ears for just a moment, because I do want to talk about this. So three, two, one, unplug your headphones, whatever. The first puzzle solution was scout location. And I guess like these are just like two word answers, because the second one was like um Shit, I just read it and forgot it. But it's interesting to see that they're coming. Like, I thought this was going to be like a big message, right? Like, mm -hmm. but it, it's coming out two words at a time. And I'm really curious what that's leading into. So, luckily, I was going to talk about how I really don't care. This is not something that really, like, appeals to me, I suppose. So, luckily, I didn't have to unplug my headset for that. I know you didn't care. That's why I was bringing it up. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for knowing. You are that. you yeah. are Miss Spoiler. Like you're the last person I expect to care about spoilers for anything. That's also a good point. Like forget forget that this is like <laughs> something you're not passionate about. Like 
<laughs> like zombie room. You see that new Spice if World movie? I don't movie? want to be spoiled for something. I usually have to like. I usually tell everyone like days in advance. Like the Star Wars. Like you know. Like yeah, I don't want to hear spoilers. That's why we banned spoilers for that for the first like two weeks it was out. Anything else? Eh. You know, like last night's uh, Shanghai performance. Like yeah, could spoil that. <laughs> Did you actually see who won? No. Okay. I have not been following that tournament at all. I've not seen It's really hard thing. to. Like well, I was watching the um, I thought they were the supposed to have casters VOD. for it, like like Roddy and Tenchi I guess and all these tomorrow guys, or... that starts or something. Like maybe bracket play starts. Like, yeah, but they're they're doing it with the uh, Nerd Street gamers, which is fine, like whatever. But I watched the VOD and they're being they're using a restream. Yeah, they so don't have about, a clean feed has been one of the yeah, complaints. Every other minute this thing would load. Yeah. <laughs> I'd just be like, damn it. Um, people asking what our subscriber count is. It's 1,181 presently. So still above 1,000, which is phenomenal in my books. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Kuro-kun4, for, for the 11 month resub. Nice. Kuro-kun. <laughs> Senpai. All right. So this has been... A, sorry, guys. This has been a lot of sort of off-topic banter here because there's not really been a lot going on. No one really jumping through loops and going for crazy tech. I mean, we do have a dark shrine coming out, I guess, but this is... With the timing not really that crazy. Bopanik sitting happily on three bases. He's got a really nice bio force. I guess it's worth noting that the medevacs were a little bit late to the party in favor of getting more production up. So they're here, though, is still the thing. And he's ready to fight. Um, mm -hmm. Billowy with adepts being heavily concentrated part of the army. Not going to do too well against the marauders. But I don't think... Like, even if these were just marines and not marauders, I still think Bopanik's hitting with this... Again, that really sweet plus one he likes to time out with. He's hitting early enough that there's not a lot in the field. As long yeah. as he doesn't fight within a photon overcharge, he should have the army advantage. For sure. Yeah, it's ruins, so I like I definitely would have called him not going for the tank push, which he isn't. But he is going for still a more direct push than drops. Now, after being denied with some pretty good force fields here on the defense, he might try and go for a couple of drops. Another thing I noticed that Billowy... Oh, there's two drops. Billowy did go for double upgrades. So the oh forge, second forge is at a little bit later, but it's still not noteworthy. Like, he's going to have some pretty good upgrades. I just realized he has, like, five observers, four observers on the field, and they spread really nice. He should have seen this coming to the main, but he's busy chasing uh, through the middle. So this photon overcharge does get popped, but not before these units get to unload. They could have focused on the pylon if they were all focusing. A little bit late for that, so the damage here not going to be too devastating. Mm, yeah, this one wasn't that bad. Uh, I mean, getting the probes off of mining is always a bit of a victory, and keeping the units alive to continue to just be annoying. Two marines with stim easily. I'm not sure it's not. Yeah, it has no over, you know, overcharge. Yeah. Uh, I guess just was paying attention to the army, which Four was six. retreating a little bit. There you go. Now it pays attention. Um... And the Blink Sockers are here now. So even though most of went down, and that's 100 gas that you usually want to go ahead and recreate. That's Still could have been much worse for Billy. Could have lost a lot more probes. But Bothnik is starting to really turn on the pressure. He had a drop, a very, very small drop. Uh, like that last Marauder went down in the natural. But they attack over to the third base. Now they see where the Blink Stalkers are. But Billy left the rest of his ground army off to the left. And that should be okay. Well, Medivac gets picked off. This wasn't super duper bad. Meanwhile, the attack on this side is not going to get much up with the Immortal there. That's actually going to be huge for stopping the Marauders. Uh, not a lot of anti-air, though, so you can just pick up and fly away. Not too bad. Problem for Botfinnick, though, is I think he was hoping to get a lot more damage done with these attacks. I mean, yeah. Bilico was killed, and it was so very minimal. Yeah, I would say so. Um, I brought up those upgrades, and it is noteworthy. Uh, Billy will have at least one upgrade lead, but actually two, because this is just that much that faster with Fakrona going on it. So that could be really scary. But we're transitioning into that the mid to late, and maybe even the late game, as they're both going for fourth fourth bases. Botnik should be adding on more Liberators, and Billowy should be worrying about said Liberators and how he's going to deal with that. So we've had people go Colossus first, you know, that's a big development legacy, the Void. Uh, but of course, the actual end-all, be-all counter would be Tempest with their range. But Botnik's still going to go for at least one more multi-pronged uh, attack with just Bio. Does have a second starter on the way, however. Just got to be really careful not to lose his army. But a DT, just a single DT comes back and makes this a little bit annoying. Yeah. Scans it, cleans it up. Uh, this is quad drops. I didn't realize so many it snuck out. This looked like two to me on the mini map. But four medevacs on the left side, and the army is pushing down the middle, so there won't be a whole lot left at home. Just a small amount of adepts. <clears throat> uh, this is, uh... Oh, there are those medevacs. I was waiting for them. Oh, 
I'm gonna try, but I'm gonna miss. Thank you to Kilari Chetal, I think is the name. Yeah, you did it right. It took me a year, but finally nailed it. <laughs> it's your part two. It still, it still it's looks your like, birthday present, getting your name correct. It still looks like Kilaris Hetal. Like I'm not... It does, but it's Kilari Chetal. <laughs> All right, so uh, coming down the middle of the map with that large army, there's not a great answer for the Liberator spread, and the Widow Mines are going to help quite a bit too if Sockers decide to blink in here. And there's four more Liberators where that came huh. from. Boffinick may have to lift this base, and that kind of sucks, but he he's going to really... lose it. Right, but that's the blink going forward. If he stimmed in right now, he would have actually taken a fantastic fight trading out the command center for it. So it just loses the command center for it. So, Liberator's going to set up, though. Yeah, well, so that, that's the problem that I was going to talk about. Bopnik oh, he gets caught. The sandwich. He still ends up getting it. The Liberators aren't helping out too much, but that sandwich is pretty damn good. The upgrades are not done for Bopnik. He still has two to wait for, but it didn't matter. Oh that God. surround he was awesome. That was from three different sides. That was fantastic. His plus two, I want to point out, was not even done for that fight. So he was really behind on upgrades taking that engagement. But now he is finally on 2-2. Two, two. So Bovenik taking a great fight from behind. Now evens up the playing field in more than one way. And as he goes for the counter push, Billowy does have some more units in play. So Bovenik hopefully doesn't get too ahead of himself here. But he's got an army that's worth fighting with. That's for certain. Especially with the Liberators. Yeah. He didn't really lose out in the very important units. His medevac count wasn't cold, so now he has to choose Liberators or Medivacs. And his Liberator count wasn't touched either, so he's just com committing to more uh, Starport units. He's actually going for a drop off to the left, which is going to leave his main army a little scar. So that's that's a little scary. We also have Templars uh, with Storm coming in soon. Well, we have Storm coming well, in, actually. We don't have any Templars. I, and I also don't know how big of a deal Storm would be necessarily right now. This is a lot more Marauders and Liberators than it is Marines. Uh, Adepts are going to be in range of the Widow Mines if they finish? Uh, the Storm is really just something that helps, but it is not what you ab what you need against a high Liberator count, or even a high Marauder count. Uh, as Marauders say, tank quite a few. Billowy's upgrades are making him very difficult to deal with. I mean, even the stocks here, plus three, blinking in to yeah. pick off his Liberators. Uh, they're getting baited into the Liberator oh, range, so Billowy taking a bad fight. He's focused here on the right side of the map, where the Adepts are getting a little bit crazy, but four Liberators are about to spawn at home, and cleaning this up doesn't seem like it's out of the question. But Bofinick is actually not cleaning. Yeah. Oh, okay, go. there we go. Uh, his attacks go on at least two bases, however, and it looks like he's actually pushing through with the front one of the Liberators. They're going to start sieging up the actual base and stop it from mining. This one doesn't really pick off. There's just not enough DPS from these Marauders to take on the uh, the adepts. The SCV count is starting to get like a little bit worrying, you know, 17, 18, but still at 46, he's okay, especially on four bases. And I believe that Warprism was taken care of by the Liberators, but the Billowy is looking for a different position. Bofnik unseaches his Liberators, luckily, so he'll still be able to find his position on the ramp. Ooh! Now he doesn't have a lot of units to push with, though, is the problem. Like, okay, great, there's not a lot of buffer underneath this, so that's going to cost him his Liberators, and he won't trade out efficiently with these Stalkers. He'll get some good kills, that's for certain, but both players taking losses, and at the end of the day, I think Bobanek took far worse losses. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't I, mm. In the Liberators more than anything else. I'm not even talking about workers. Like, replacing yeah. those Liberators? Okay, the worker count sucks, so you went on the money, but it's the fact that he had this wonderful-looking army... They probably could have pulled back and gone home with, but instead decided to push and gamble, and that gamble did not pay off. Yeah, the problem I can see right now is that Bofinick wasn't only losing SCVs, he had them off of mining. So, you know, if you lose your army, go back home and are, you know, spamming all the production buttons, you can't make anything. That's just like a like a feeling in your gut that you're about to lose this game. But Billowy, having lost all of his Blink Stalkers, or most of them, he had like five left over, wasn't exactly super eager to push across the map. He had a couple of Wood of Mines to deal with first, too. Now he is... But the army supply is still something that Botfinic can work with and still recover. And when it comes to recovering, that's kind of where Terran can, can go Super Saiyan, you know, and, and go for drops, like Botfinic's been trying to do. But actually, it picks up another drop. Liberators have to be in a good position, not just a position. And I don't think he notices Billowy's arm moving over to the left. It's a planetary, however. That should buy him a lot of time to move over with the army, and I'm not sure about Billowy doing this. Yeah, it's a little bit risky, but the Immortal's going to help tear this down. The SCVs don't have that surround oh, wow. initially, so it is going to fall. Help. I'm not sure why it took so long for Botnik to decide to go over there. Like, I mean, I, I understand, like, force fields can be scary, but there's only one force field. It was a very well-upgraded giant army, but the help of the planetary was his best hope. And I guess he was just microing a drop or something. It took yeah. too long to respond. Had to dance through those storms. As we look over these bases, though, there's really just not that much going on for Botnik. I mean, for both players, their worker count is kind of low. And funny enough, at this stage of the game, that's kind of acceptable. You're only really saturating one base with like little bits, remnants of the other one still mining. So, Bob Finnick trying to get this command center back up. 
I guess he wants another planetary. I was going to say it would be very easy to lift his main if nothing else over. Mm. Uh, shout out to Acid Bean for the 18 month resub. But that supply count for Bopnik, I just realized, well, looking not too bad, this is all on plus two still. He never caught up to the 3 3 of his opponents. Yeah. Oh, and DT's in there too, adding a lot of extra damage. And he just got unseed. He bathed in the storms. GG. Congratulations to Billowy. He'll take that first game. And it's it's so funny because as good as Billowy is, I still ranked him a little bit in the underdog coming into this. And maybe that's too much Bopnik bias and hype, but. Uh, GG as Billowy takes that first game. Now we are going to go to a small commercial break, but before we do, I was going to talk about this tweet I wanted to mention before. Did anyone else hear? Because I know I'm a Batman fan and Zombie Rub isn't, so I'm not talking to Zombie Rub in this one. <laughs> but did anyone watch Batman Beyond when they were younger, when that show was on TV? Because Batman Beyond um, came partnered with a show called The Zeta Project. And I was, I was doing just like, I don't remember, boring Twitter stuff yesterday, but I recently learned the person who did The Medic from StarCraft actually did the the main character's voice, uh, the girl Ro, from the Zeta Project. And I tweeted about this yesterday, and it was really cool for me, was the voice actress herself actually replied to it. And she replied to it with like a line from the medic, uh, something about like, where did I leave my watch? Huh. Sure, is it? She put it right here, yeah. Operation complete, now where did I leave my watch? <laughs> So that's cool. That's super, super cool. I love when you connect those dots, like this voice actor did that voice type thing. Mm. But, uh, and we're still looking for bad cosplay entrance, guys. So please, looking for them. Tweet them at us. We're going to go to a small break. And like I said, we'll see you soon. All right, guys, we're back. Hello. And I was remarking to Zombie Girl, man, like our ad times are all fucked up today because of the uh, severe downtime. So just apologize. Apologies. Excuse me for that. But uh, we are getting into game number two in this best of three for the Corsair Cup. Next stop is actually going to be Mana versus Guru. As they're both in the semifinals, currently waiting over there. So uh, you can look forward to a ZVP afterwards. But spawning here on the bottom left side of Dusk Towers, he's on his last life. It is my insanity's Botvinik. In the top right as the Red Protoss, it is Afrika Freaks, by the way, actually. Yeah, not, not MVP. The illusion. The illusion is almost complete, if there wasn't Lycopedia. I still find that crazy. Like, I didn't realize that he was so... Like, that he had been on so many teams. Now, that actually, on one hand, looks a little bit impressive, but on the other hand, very scary to look at, because you're like, okay, why has this guy been on so many teams? Like, is he just garbage? Is the drama with him? Like, what's his deal? I mean, you do wonder. So, like, there's... Wait, is that... actually, I don't know if this is public knowledge. Um, there's a couple of players, maybe this one, I guess, that they're actually, like, they're actually very good housemates. So that's, you know, apparently is why they've, they've moved around teams a couple of times. Uh, and I, yeah. I don't know if it's the other way. Um, but I think there's also just the very, like, there's actually a likely possibility. Like, I think Joshi is kind of in that zone right now where um, you're good, so they see potential, but you're not really great. So you might be the first one they cut, you know? Like, oh, Tom, you're right on the cusp of not getting fired, but we had to let go 10%, so sorry. <laughs> that's maybe where he falls. Yeah, it's just, I mean, I know this from an employer standpoint back when we were doing security hires and stuff. Like, if you see someone's been with seven different companies, that's not a good thing. That's like, okay, he probably yeah. keeps getting fired. Yeah, so I, I don't know what it's like. Um, it's Especially, um, you know, if oh. someone... Yeah, Whoa. what's up? What's this up? is like the first time we've seen a Reaper in like 80 games of the Bob. <laughs> well, it's, it's so weird because he used to go like... The two tournaments ago, he was going Reaper every single time. And then a tournament ago, he never went Reapers. He was always going yeah. for like those those fast Marines. But um, anyway, I was going to say with esports being like it is, you can't really do the same thing as you do in real world. It's like, okay, you've been through eight teams the last four years. That's weird. Eight teams the last four years is like, oh, this one went defunct. This one went defunct. This one, <laughs> you know, couldn't pay its players. Yeah. <laughs> oh, womp womp. Well, esports. Was, this is a little bit interesting for me because I feel like what Billowy did last game wasn't some sort of build order win where Bopinik fell apart because he didn't see it coming and it's not like he messed out and mismatched third timings or anything like that so for no other reason can I really see him going for this Reaper it's, it's just weird because nothing in that game makes you think okay a Reaper would be better for game two but the question is did he see this oddly placed Twilight Council thing? the answer is no so this might actually be for a bit of something cheeky this game and the scan is also gonna miss it oh that's painful yeah well, a lot of Protosses in PvZ, you know, if this was versus Zerg, I think you just would 
call the Dark Shrine follow-up, because that seems to be really in lately, you know? But for PvT, um, it's so possible, you know, Dark Shrine really follows nicely after a blink attack, and I do believe Billowy did that last time we saw him, but not the last game. Last game, he did end up getting a Dark Shrine, but it was a very different game, like much more macro and and whatnot. And Daividiki's only ever did that fourth, it stalled the fourth base last game and was included in the army. I don't think DTs were ever warped into kill those SCVs. Those were all like adepts. Yeah, huh. pretty sure. Huh. Let's see if it's even the plan. I mean, just hiding the Twilight Council could just be for, you know, actually hiding also these gateways and, and making them wonder, like, what the hell is going on? I only see a robo. Well, Blink being the weapon of choice is... <laughs> It's like a necessity. It's like Stim. You just want it for mobility, if nothing else. But it's going to be nice to see if he uses this early. I mean, Bopnik has been doing sort of these two base openers, so it is kind of scary to do anything designed towards an all-in, but Billy's going to at least have some harass going on with that Warp Prism. However, he's going to have to first deal with the Liberator, and looks like pylons have been set up very nicely at the main. Mm. Not so much the natural, but at least the main is covered. There is that follow-up Dark Shrine. So... With Bothnik, once again, so far going for that two-base tank push, this is a uh, almost identical setup as to what Mana had when Mana versus Bothnik went down in the finals of Monday's Cup. Um, he had Blink, he was pressuring a little bit. I'm, I don't think he went for a Dark Shrine. Maybe one of the times he did, but it ended up really working out. Um, but Blink can only get you so far. It's really about the control and the pressure you apply with it. And if Bofinic just steamrolls your blink, we've actually seen that go very poorly for the defending Protoss. That's certainly what Bofinic will be looking for. But attack into the main base is never going to go out the pylon set up as they were, and who knew? This is that without doing much damage. Yeah, two probes definitely not necessarily worth it. Uh, I mentioned this last game, but this was kind of something we talked about more when we're casting mana, but it applies to Billowy as well. Billowy did go for like four observers that last game. It made it really tough for mm. Bopnik to get anything done unseen. This time it's not as crazy, but it's still the fact that you've got that observer over your ramp. You know, like, as a Protoss player, everything that your Terran opponent is doing. And knows, more importantly, there's still no third down. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, it, it feels sometimes it does, anyways. Like, this two-base tank push is like the immortal sentry all in of old, where it's like, okay, I scout this from the very beginning. He literally tells me I will be doing this. And it's still rather hard to take advantage or uh, beat back. But oh. I just looked at this base, and I was I was thinking of taking advantage of the lack of scouting from Bofnik, and I got my wires crossed. But I really wonder about this hidden base. Like, all you see is the guy on two base. We literally just went over that. And you decide to take a fourth? Even if it is hidden, it's still an investment. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, we've talked too about how it doesn't tend to pay off, but I kind of feel like Billy's in a fine position to take it. <laughs> now, Bopin is going for the push that we've seen him more classically win TVP with. Tanks and Marines of plenty. And again, a big part of this is Billowy. He's going to have Resonating Glaives. He's going to have plus one. This means he's going to actually be able to deal with the Marines pretty easily. Can he deal with the tanks? And I feel like as long as Bofinic doesn't miscontrol these medevacs and lose like three of them before a fight begins, it'll probably not go too badly. I also don't know if you saw the DT. Should have heard it. Yeah. There we go. But this is a problem, you know? You know they have uh -oh. DTs. That's either a counterattack that's really good, as we see right here, or it's one DT at a time until you run out of scans. Oh, God. He's going to try and put down some turrets because he is out of scans. Oh, actually, he's got scans in the natural. I don't know what he's doing. He's just distracted and pushing through the middle one to save the scans for the offense, perhaps, being that priority. Stalker's by a little bit of time, just poking in and out, but really just picking off a Marine at a time. It's not that... Not that good. Uh, Loose control of the natural, but Botvinnik is looking to win the game with this push, not necessarily play macro, so it's not so terrible. In fact, the Mothership mm. Core falling back with those probes, just going to recall the recall out. the Oh, we recalled the secret one. But See, that, that's a pretty cool but idea. that also removes any photon overcharge from home. He's just lost the Mothership Core aspect of this. So, on one hand, you're like, okay, you might base trade this out. On the other, there's less defense now. Well... I'm, I'm actually more worried about the Blink Stalkers being where they are, which is not close to this. Because <laughs> the Blink Stalkers would make any advancement of the tanks really, like, second-guess themselves. For right now, there's there's no second-guessing. You can pick up the tanks and try and go for it. Two of the Immortals have had their shields popped already, so those are now on cooldown. Yeah. Slowly yeah. chipping away at the pylons, just advancing its way forward. Um, stalkers are coming from behind. I guess for 
Botfinnick, he's, he's questioning why this is going so well, so he decides to pull back. Like, this is going yeah. too well, I'm doing too good? I don't understand. Yeah, it is very interesting. I mean, this... I brought up the two base of Mordal in, but let's bring up something else that's maybe even older, or same time, I guess. The 1-1-1. One, one, one. You know, back in the day, you could actually sacrifice your natural, um, and still... You, you could still win the game. And maybe that's what Bofinic thinks Billowy is doing, just sacrificing the third so he could play the long game and try and win that way. But no, Billowy never really is... truly sacrificed the third. Right, and this is a problem now because Billowy's income is fantastic, and as we look at that army count, he's been able to build up heavily while this went on. In a normal situation where it is only two bases, right, Billowy starts falling behind and he can't actually keep up with unit production because of economy. But with this fourth slash third base fully saturated with that Nexus or that Mothership Core recall, he is so good to go. Yeah. This is very interesting. Um, I, I, you know, this is definitely something that was a response, and we questioned it because, like, that's a lot of money to invest into a fourth base. What if you actually just get steamrolled entirely because of that? But if Bafnik was going to, you know, kind of like let go here and just pull back and say that there was enough for me, then that's when the fourth base being secret was a really good idea. So kudos to Billowy. I don't think that was luck. Like, oh, good thing I went for fourth base. It was my plan is to go for fourth base and let you kill my third. Well, there's a big fight brewing in the middle of the map, waiting to come down. Mm. Uh, certainly, Bofnik still has a good army, even though Billowy's economy is, is you know, looking better with that base. Bofnik might be able to lift his main soon enough, but that's a while off still. Um, but Billowy has upgrades. He has, uh, you know, a couple of Guardian Shields, or actually just one. Uh, Mortal of those Immortals getting any opportune hits on those tanks could be a big deal. But is he really going to sacrifice his third again? <laughs> I guess. I mean, he kind of gives them the opportunity. Liberty's can set up behind them. Screw the third. He goes for the natural. Oh, this oh, is wow. going to be such a sick choke to set up those Liberators on. But, of course, there's going to be that fear of blink from behind. So I like that he sets them up on top of the tank instead of just on top of the ramp. Billowy so... now saying it's going to be base trade times. And he goes for the counterattack. I really like his idea for the fourth. And that's still going to work out for him because it's a base trade. Like He has a yeah. hidden base that he doesn't know about. But I don't know why he didn't just take the fight when he could. Like He actually let Bofnik right in and that looked a little weird i thought his army <laughs> was good DT. enough to try uh let's see if this DT, like now. billowy does have everything for a base trade dt's hidden base still a really good army yeah this attack on the other side of the map though is not going to be met without consequence that's a liberator in the tank on the ramp with a lot of marines on top of it adepts are going to try and transfer through next to getting pre-pulled as well yeah, uh, it's i mean you could technically lift the buildings like terran what all terrans do and put all other races on tilt but I mean... Well, if he lifts, then he can't scan. And, okay, he's going to get the Dark Shrine, so... That's the last DT, I believe. No, he has two. He's... Recalls the rest of the probes over once again. It is full-on base trade. He is flying over to a funny location. <laughs> it's kind of guarded, but also right next to his opponent. Perhaps won't realize it. Ah. But being in the air, he can't scan, so he's bleeding out some of these Marines. And while he did have a shit ton of Marines going to this fight, this Dark Templar is up to 13 kills already. Yeah. He also warped in another D DT at his hidden base. So with the command center is lifted, and you know he's got to land this for scans. I mean, that's, that's the scariest part about this. He's gonna lose a tank now. These tanks are incredibly valuable. Picks them up, scoops them up. That's not it though. That's you're missing a base. He's gonna notice in ten seconds that that pop up isn't there. I I don't being revealed. I don't know that he knows. Oh, this is so weird. All right, so Billowy probably knows where that base floated to. It's a bit of guesswork, of course, but while this happens, tech's not replaced. It's only actually the gateways that are being rebuilt in the Twilight Council, so he can't, he can't put down the Templar Archives brand new. He can't make any Archons or DTs mm. anytime soon. Billowy's no. army, though, I this is weird because I don't actually know who wins in a straight-up fight. So I think the problem right now is that Bofinic's army is entirely positional. It oh, really God. is dependent on tanks and uh, Liberators. And Billowy, if he just catches the army once out of position, should just take a really good fight. Command center is lifted, so there's no scans. That DT has just become incredibly powerful. That would just be game without that command center. Uh, and it's gonna go down, so. Where's that SCV, though? He could build a new CC, possibly. Oh my god. Build a new CC, wait until it has the orbital on top of it. Oh god. Uh, he did uh, bleed out a couple tanks by the looks of it, so that tank army falling apart. It's still mostly power through the Liberators. Like, truth be told, the tanks are good and absolutely fantastic, but it is a lot of power through those Liberators. But Bofinic falling apart right now. His opponent's actually expanding, and that SCV's about to get caught. It's no! the last SCV on the map. 
Oh, okay. That's so okay. now there's no more detection, period. And DTs should, could, yeah. and would technically win this game. A lot Billowy. of reside. This DT is up to how many kills? 11. Oh. Billowy knows it, too, because he saw the little alert yeah. come up. So That's all he needs. He's actually making another Dark Shrine, just in case. <laughs> He's going to win me this game. But his main army could win him the game now. I, I don't know what... Not how I saw this. Thinking. This is not how I saw this game ending, but this is still pretty fantastic. Like, Bobinick didn't really lose this game terribly, right? That's the funny thing about this. And Billowy, he definitely deserves the win. <laughs> Billowy. He, he did have, like, 800 minerals, so he just beat on two more Nexus. Man, it's like, Billowy Billow Star Billow Stargate. I <laughs> know, uh, he's Dark Shrine first. <laughs> I mean, B B Bofnik is probably hoping that there's o there's only a Nexus, you know? Like, and he has, like, 300 minerals in the bank. So he only has to kill maybe three buildings. Because that's what a lot of base raids go down to, a Nexus and a Simulator and a Pylon or something like that, right? But it's a lot more than just three buildings. I mean, there's gateways, there's there's a lot of frickin' Pylons, there's there's two other Nexus. There's, there's no way Bofnik wins this by just sniping buildings. Well, uh, I mean, huh. <laughs> yeah, I, I like Botvinik's attempt here, but he just doesn't have the army supply to make it work. The yeah. Liberators could technically guard against Phoenix for a little bit of time to keep the buildings alive, but... <clears throat> sure, sure. Um, I, I'm thinking that once he sees the base, he'll tap out. <laughs> That's that's what I'm guessing. I mean, he doesn't. I guess that's the thing. Like, we check his vision. He doesn't actually know about one base, much less three. Overcharge is gonna catch everything. That's gonna be game GG. <laughs> Ouch. Oh no. All right. Well, congratulations to Billowy, who will take yeah. the series and uh, move on. Now we're gonna play ads here really quick and not talk about it a lot because the other guys have been waiting for us. Mono versus Guru. When we return, so this one's actually good to go. Both semis. We'll see you guys soon.